Hey guys, welcome back to IGCSE Physical Topical Questions. Uh, we, we have discussed some electricity questions in this video. I actually focused on the recent papers like 2024 and 2023. So let's get started. Question number one is a washing machine has an electric motor, this electric motor and an electric heater. As shown in figure 7.1, this is a simplified circuit of the diagram of the washing machine. Alright, so they are saying that the heater has a resistance of 25 ohms this is the resistance and the power supply has an emf or electromotive force of 230 volts state what is me meant by electromotive force all right so electromotive force or emf is the work done in moving unit charge around a complete circuit So basically, um, the work done, if we have a charge here, the work done that is required to move it all around and back to the battery or the source, th th that much work done is known as EMF or the electromotive force. Okay, state the potential difference across the heater or the voltage coming from the battery is 230 volts and a parallel circuit voltage is equal, so it's 230 volts. Across the heater potential difference is 230 volts as well calculate the current in the heater so the formula is going to be i equals voltage divided by resistance voltage across the heater is 230 resistance is 25 ohms the current is going to be 9.2 amps okay the current in the motor is 1.6 1.6 ampere okay so here the current is 1.6 amperes uh, determine the reading on the ammeter it's on the figure shown. Mm, all right. So we know uh, the current across across the motor is 1.6. The current across the heater, let me erase the extras first so it will be easy. So current across the mo in the motor is 1.6A. Current across this heater is 9.2A. Current here, both of these currents is going to be added. 9.2 plus 1.6 let's calculate that and we get 10.8 amps why because in a series circuit the current is added so we can say sum of currents in a junction into a junction equals to sum of currents out of a junction which basically means total sum of a total current is the sum of current in in the branches so all of the uh, the currents add up to the total current you can uh, memorize this one sum of current into a junction equals sum of current out of a junction all right um, another question a mobile phone battery can be recharged using the charging plate and stores 4.5 times 10 power joules of energy when fully recharged. The current in the secondary coil is 0.63 ampere when the output voltage is 12 volts. Calculate the calculate the time taken to fully uh, to charge a complete uh, a completely uncharged battery. So let's try to figure out what we have. We have the um, energy which is stored by the charging plates. That's our energy. Okay, so and they have also given us the current. The current is 0 0.63 amps and uh, the voltage, the output voltage, which is 12 volts. So calculate the time. Now we know Q equals to IT and also E equals to energy equals to voltage times charge so we can equate both of them to find our time e is going to be v i t therefore time is going to be energy which is 4.5 times 10 power 4 joules divided by current which is 0 0.63 multiplied by voltage which is 12 and the answer is going to be 6000 seconds 6000 seconds that is when the battery is fully recharged. Calculate the charge 
capacity to the battery in 60 seconds. Uh, this is very, very simple. Q equals to IT. Current is going to be 0 0.63 times time is 60. We get 38 coulombs. That means at 60 seconds, 38 coulombs, charge is passing through the battery. Okay, moving on. Uh, this question, uh, question 8, figure 8.1 shows us our circuit. The circuit is designed to switch on a night light when the surroundings are dark. Okay, so let's try to see this circuit. We have a power supply here. Uh, over here, we have a normal resistor. And over here, we have an LDR. This is a light-dependent resistor. This over here is a diode, and the symbol shows that it emits light. So it's LED, light-emitting diode. Okay, on figure 8.1, draw a circuit symbol for a wattmeter used to measure the potential difference across the LDR, light-dependent resistor. So this is LDR at the top, and we, we know that wattmeter is always drawn parallel to a circuit. It's not drawn in series. So this is how you draw your wattmeter. Okay, uh, the surroundings change from light to dark. So state the effect of this change on the resistance of the LDR. So uh, a key rule for LDR is that when um when there is less light, there is more resistance. When there is more light, there is low resistance. So over here they're saying that um resist uh, light has de reduced, so resistance has increased. Now, state and explain the effect of this change on the potential difference across LED. So, what happens to LED? Now, we know that um, resistance over, over here, over here, resistance has increased. So, when resistance increases in one portion, that means overall or total resistance has also increased. And according to Ohm's law, V equals to IR. So, voltage is directly proportional to resistance. When total resistance has increased, so voltage will, will also increase. Let's try to write it down. Potential difference across LED increases. Because, why? Because the resistance, the total resistance, of the parallel combination of LED and of uh, LED and LDR has increased. So, according to Ohm's law, now uh, figure eight point two shows another circuit lamps a and lamps b they are identical filament lamps a and b are identical and um the power supply is 240 volts the current supplied by the power supply is 0 0.5 ampere calculate the resistance of lamp lamp a okay so this is 240 volts total current that's coming is 0 0.5 amp now lamp a and lamp b are equal so the current that's going to be divided is going to be equally divided so current across lamp A is going to be 0 0.5 divided by 2 pi because they're both equally divided. So it's 0 0.25 amps across A as well as B. 0 0.25 A, 0 0.25 ampere. Now, calculate the resistance. So we know V equals IR. So a resistance is going to be voltage divided by current. Voltage in a parallel circuit remains the same. So voltage across A equals to voltage across B, 240. Therefore, this is going to be 240 divided by um, 0 0.25. The answer is 960 ohms. Now, uh, question 6. This figure shows the circuit diagram of the flashlight or torch. The electromotive force, so uh, this is what gives us the light. This is our battery and this is our normal resistor. The electromotive force, EMF of the battery is 4.5 volts. So the battery is providing us with 4.5 voltage. The circuit contains a 60 ohm resistor, fixed resistor. 
the current in the LED is 0 0.02 amps. So 0 0.02 amps. Okay, calculate the potential difference across the LED. So we need to find what is the voltage over here. What is the voltage here? Now, we know that the voltage coming from the battery is 4.5. So, uh, the voltage is not same across the entire circuit because some of the some there's some lost volts, okay? So, here is 4.5 volts. We can calculate the voltage here and then we can subtract both of them. Because V3, total voltage, is going to be V across the resistor plus voltage across the LED. So... Let's find the voltage across the resistor, V equals IR, the simple formula. Current is 0.02, current will be same because it's series, but the resistance is different, times 60. This is going to be 1.2. So total voltage is 4.5, this equals to VR, which is 1.2, plus voltage across LED. So voltage is going to be 4.5 minus 1.2 and the answer will be 3.3 volts okay next explain why led does not light up if the battery is reserved why because um why does led does not light up if the battery is reserved because led is a diode and a diode only allows current in one direction only allows current to flow in one direction Okay, moving on. The chemical energy, st energy stored in the battery is 1050 joules. Show that the flashlight operates for three, three hours. Okay, so we can try to find a formula. Now we know Q equals to, or rather E equals to um, Q times voltage. And Q equals to I times t so we we have um we have time we have energy we are actually supposed to find the time okay we're supposed to find the time we have we have current we have uh, energy and we have voltage so we can find the time e is going to be i v t so t would be so time is going to be e divided by i v e is 1050 divided by current which is 0 0.02 times voltage we have to use a 4.5 here times 4.5 the answer is 11666.667 in seconds so um to convert this into hours we divide by 60, this converts into minutes, and then we divide again, this converts into hours. Small to big is divide. This is going to be 3.2, which approximately equals to 3 hours. Now, calculate the total charge that flows in, through the LED in 3600 seconds. So, Q equals to I multiplied by time. Current is 0 0.02 times 3600. The answer is going to be 72 coulombs. Okay. C. Figure 8.2 shows a circuit. Uh, we have three cells which are connected in series, and then there is a voltmeter attached across the across these cells. We have uh, two resistors, resistors, uh, and uh, there is a diode which is uh, attached in series with R1. Three cells are identical and they have zero resistance. R1, R2, R3 are identical. The cells are identical as well as the resistors. When the diode is conducting, it has zero resistance and zero potential difference across it. Determine the EMF of one cell. So this is just going to be 6 divided by 3 is going to be equally divided. And that's that will be 2 volts. So this is 2 volts, 2 volts, and 2 volts. 
um, determine the ratio of potential difference across R2 to the potential difference across R3, R2 and R3. We have to find other voltage. And voltage depends on resistance. If there is more resistance, there is going to be more um there's going to be more voltage. So we need to find the ratio. Uh the ratio of resistance. Another point we need to notice um voltage across R2 is same as voltage across R1. So like in parallel circuit, voltage is same. But voltage across parallel is not same as voltage across uh, the third resistor. And we know voltage depends on resistance, so let's find the resistances. So we can just find the resistance between parallel, R parallel, to R3, okay? So what's uh, going to be R3? Let's give it a um, value of 2. This is 2 ohm. Now if that's 2 ohm, these two are 2 ohm as well. Because um uh, they are identical right so now to find the parallel resistance we can multiply 2 times 2 plus 2 times 2 this is going to be 4 divided by 4 equals to 1 so we can say that the ratio is 1 to 2 that's for resistance but say this is the same for parallel voltage is also for, um like this voltage is also 1 to 2 now they're saying that the cells are reversed. Stay in, say it and explain the change of the current in R1. So okay, if the current are reversed, well, uh, current becomes zero because of diode. As diode only allows current to flow in one direction. Determine the new value of ratio potential difference across R2 to R3. So now we will assume that this thing does not exist. Then voltage will be equally divided between the two, so it will be 1 to 1 ratio.